hello out there and happy winter so when the seasons change and especially around new year's time of year i like to sit down and make it a point to make a list of the things that are inspiring me right now i like to think about what themes i like to work with and what i want to learn about in the next couple of months i thought i would share my inspiration list with you and i'll also share some imagery that goes along with the different themes that i am interested in for the winter months so i'm just gonna get right into it I'm going to start off with a category that I always consider when I'm thinking of inspiration and that is flowers and plants. Since I've been incorporating flowers into my work for years and years, I'm at a place where I'd really like to work with botanicals that are very strange and unusual. I'm thinking crazy patterns, interesting shapes, unusual color combinations and also incorporating texture um, into the flowers. Orchids are flowers that I always keep coming back to and want to continue to work with next year. I feel like I'm going to be continually using them in my work because the variations can be so bizarre and beautiful. I'm also gravitating towards irises, especially the bearded iris. They also have incredibly unusual color combinations and variations. Tulips, lilies, and I especially love spotted lilies. I wrote down tight roses and bouquets, which I think I'm intrigued about doing some pieces that are more like still life setups with flowers in a vase on a table, something like that. But I also think about the roses that are often at supermarkets that are so tight and narrow compared to the very open blooms that I'm used to doing. I think that'd be a fun way to practice roses in my work. And then as far as other plants goes, I wrote down trees. Trees are a motif that's very important to me and I use pretty frequently, but I'm going to continue to use them into next year. And I also think that I'd like to make some pieces uh, with the theme of forests. And then connected to that, I also wrote down leaves. I've been making pieces with leaves this past summer and into the fall. I definitely started honing in on leaves that are on the ground and how beautiful they are and how I want to work on pieces that incorporate leaves as a motif. Yeah, so they're on my list. So my next category is animals. I just kind of intuitively wrote down what animals I'm inspired by for this list. And I started with wildcats, which is definitely a symbol or motif that I've been using throughout the years, like tigers and lions, uh, leopards, that sort of thing. I think I want to use more wildcats because I want to work personally on courage and bravery and strength. So wildcats tend to be symbols of those themes, so I want to incorporate them into my work. I also want to embroider peacocks and quails. Uh, I definitely was into quails last year. I went through a kind of quail phase um, and uh, yeah, but I've never embroidered a peacock or beaded a peacock and I thought that'd be really cool. I especially like imagery of peacocks when they're sitting in trees. They don't necessarily have their full feathers splayed out behind them. They're kind of more demure, but um, yeah, I thought that would be cool to try. And I also tend to shy away from like blue animals. So I think that'd be cool. I have a lot of blue thread I need to use. Living in a city has made me more aware of and also more inspired by pigeons. So they're on my list of inspirations. I'd love to do some more city pigeon themed pieces. I just think they're really cute and sweet and interesting and they have really cool color variations as well that I didn't really realize until being amongst them more often. I also wrote down seagulls and other seabirds. I think because I'm missing living by the ocean and seeing them regularly that they're kind of on my mind and I'd love to incorporate some pieces with them because I think a lot of people don't love seagulls. They're kind of considered a pest on the beach but I think they're really beautiful and interesting and uh, just thinking about them and wanting to put them in some work. When I randomly see bird murmuring, that's something that is also inspiring to me. What else did I write down? I wrote down horses, very majestic. 
I don't think I need to say more. Uh, grasshoppers to symbolize luck. And I also wrote down the scarlet ibis or ibis. I'm not totally sure how you say that, but that is a red bird that has a hook beak and it correlates to the star tarot card, which is a big inspiration of mine. So I love to do one of those birds for a piece. The next category I have is art. A big one for me is Bauhaus art, especially the weavings of Annie Albers and Gunther Stossel. Again, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but I'm currently reading this book. Bauhaus Textiles, Women, Artists, and the Weaving Workshops. I got this at a secondhand bookstore in town and it's awesome so far. I'm close to halfway done. Actually, I'm like a third way through the book, but it's really interesting to read about and learn about and I love all of the art. Yeah, this book goes more in depth into the history of the weaving workshops and Bauhaus itself. I've just been interested in the realm of patterns and color and shapes, sort of like non-objective artwork, which is unusual for me. I tend to be very symbol heavy with my work. I'd also say that quilts as a subject matter are inspiring me right now. The block motifs, the purpose of a quilt, or the process of making a quilt and how quilts incorporate textile waste and make something beautiful. I want to make work about quilts and also make quilts. One of my favorite artists that I've loved since being a kid is Gustav Klimt. So um, I did put him on the list because I don't think I've ever really made too much work inspired by Klimt and I'm ready to go down that route because I think it correlates to Bauhaus, it correlates to quilts and like the busyness in patterns that I'm trying to achieve. I love how he used color and uh, small geometric patterns and I'm interested in exploring that sort of angle in my work. And then relating to that, I also have Art Nouveau on my list, which is also a theme that I've always been inspired by, but now want to focus even more on. I love the swirly floral symmetrical motifs. I guess I'm really into turn of the century right now and all the little pockets of art movements that occurred between the early 1900s to maybe 1920 as far as art and design. I also have a fashion category and I think it relates a lot to my art category. For example, I wrote down the Vienna dress reform or women's dress reform, which kind of happened in Vienna and Emily Floget was a designer who made a lot of cool outfits and I'm really inspired by her work, but she also was Gustav Klimt's muse and model. So there's overlap between both of their work I love the ornamentation and the strange oversized silhouettes, the neck embellishments and giant sleeves. These are all things that I kind of want to work on with making clothes and embellishing clothes. Another fashion inspiration I have is House of Biba, or I guess just Biba it's often known as, and this was a brand from the 1960s and 1970s. It's known for like very glamorous disco-y bohemian looks with rich jewel tones and dusty colors, big collared lapels and flares and feminine dresses. I'm always inspired by Biba as well, but right now I especially want to make pieces that have a Biba flair to them. I'd love to make some dagger collar shirts for myself. That's just like a type of clothing that I really like and don't have in my wardrobe right now. I really love the colors and fabrications that are used in Biba. And then also they utilize a lot of hats in their ensembles, so I like to also make some matching hats with pieces that I make. My last category is miscellaneous themes and motifs. I started my list with hands. When I began my embroidery journey, I used hands quite a lot. And I feel like in the last couple of years, I haven't really gravitated towards incorporating them in my work and I've kind of come back around to it and would like to use hands as a motif again. Angels is a theme and motif that I'd like to work with. I kind of have my own way of representing angels, which tends to be stars and wings. 
but it could also be kind of unusual shapes that have an ethereal mood to them. To me, an angel is representative of anything that's loving and positive and protective energy. So that's something I want to work with and kind of incorporate and focus on. I wrote down house slash garden. I like to contemplate what I want to manifest. And I guess for me, I think a lot about how much I would like to have my own house down the line and just have a home that I feel really comfortable in in a place where I really love for me to kind of handle the maybe lack of control that I have over the situation right now is to incorporate it into my work use the motif of a house to let go a little bit create a spell I'd say to kind of honor what I'm thinking about but if I put it in my art, it helps me kind of let go a little bit of like an outcome. But anyways, yeah, house and garden. I think also I'm inspired by Victorian samplers, which often include a house and a garden in them. And I think I'd like to make my own version of my like dream of a having a house and a garden in a sampler. Uh, related to that, I also wrote down windows. Windows are a motif that I like to come back to again and again. I like to think of them as symbols of letting light in. They're like portals in a sense. Anyways, I like to put some windows into my symbolism artwork. Let's see. I also wrote down large shells, which I didn't really elaborate in my notes on. But I realized I've done a lot of shells in my work. I like to sometimes do Venus themed pieces and incorporate shells, but I've never done a large con shell and they have such beautiful colorations so I think that'd be really fun to do a piece with or do a couple pieces with. The last but not least I have fairies and nymphs on my list of inspirations. I've been working on lots of fairyland inspired pieces this past year that's been an overarching theme that I'm focusing on and I'd like to bring it with me into 2024 and it's interesting to contemplate fairies or nymphs in the context of winter because in the springtime and the summer it's so easy to feel like nature is alive with a buzzing energy and then winter time it's much more stark and I personally have less of a connection to nature because I'm not spending as much time outside but uh, I like the challenge of imagining these magical nature spirits in the context of a cold dreary winter. That's what I've got. That's my condensed inspiration list that I made for entering winter. I'm not generally a holiday person because I have a very low threshold for stress and group things, but I do really love New Year's and um, my birthday is in early February, so I can't be too moody about winter time. I like to try to take a positive spin on the colder months and just like stay inspired and creative. I think for 2024, my all-encompassing theme is heart opening. I want to focus on magic and art that has a heart opening effect, um, for me at least, and then hopefully it translates to others as well. I hope you like this video. Let me know in the comments what you're excited about for the new year, what kind of stuff you're getting into. I really hope everyone out there is doing well and uh, taking time to relax. As always, my link to my shop and my link to my Patreon is in the description of the video. I'm looking forward to making more videos. I'll be back soon. Take care. Bye.